dramatization. After a car wreck, you may have to fight with a highly trained insurance company rep whose job is to knock your damaged plane down and out. It's a bad idea to enter the ring alone against a trained boxer, and it could be a bad idea to fight against a big insurance company by yourself. When the bell rings, attorney Dennis Sperling will be there to fight for your rights. If you've been seriously injured in a car wreck, call me, attorney Dennis Sperling, at 866-529-2444. That's 866-529-2444. Dramatization. Bad drivers cause car wrecks. Not paying attention to the road, operating electronic devices, and drinking while driving can lead to serious injuries. If you've been the victim of a bad driver, a trial lawyer may be able to help you recover money to pay your medical bills, reimburse you for lost wages, and compensate you for the pain caused by your injuries. If you, your friends, or family have been injured in a car wreck, contact me, Attorney Dennis Sperling, toll free, 866-529-2444. I'm here to help. Hi, my name is Dennis Sperling. I'm not a lawyer, but my daddy is. Yeah. If you've been hurt in a car accident, then call my daddy. No need to scream and yell like a little kid. Yeah, I know right. My daddy will fight for your rights. Yeah, fight for your rights. If you've been involved in a car accident, call my daddy return in Dennis Sperling. Hello, I'm attorney Dennis Sperling. If you've been injured in a car wreck, call me at 713-229-0770. Call my daddy, daddy, daddy. Hi, my name is Stephanie, and these are my two adorable and handsome sons. And that is my ex-husband, attorney Dennis Sperling. He practices personal injury law and will be more than happy to help you with claims arising from automobile accidents. He doesn't get paid unless you get paid. And as we first wives know, the more our ex-husbands get paid, the more we get paid. So let me help him help you. Call Mr. Sperling at 713 229 0770. Call my daddy! daddy. I don't think Stephanie likes my music. We're many years removed, but I'm human, so listening to the music sometimes takes me back. I invited just Brittany to Beans and Cornbread Studio to hear my latest album, Coffee King International. The thing that brought me to go and see a counselor was I was just at a point where I realized I needed a break. I want to purchase Stephanie a really nice gift. Nothing says, hey, you're all right with me like a diamond. <laughs>
I know that I'm teaching it. Not respect my orders. What the fuck? Stop! I want to get another right. Air right now. You punch the air properly. Swinging around eating some bananas. Fucking stupid. Preach is crying right now, swinging from a monkey wrench. And why is she going to end up with a poor mate? Because we as black men are not raising black boys to be the men that our women need. If we're going to be men, the mm -hmm. first thing we got to do is take responsibility for why our women feel the way they feel. I want you to listen to what this Negro has to, Negro has to say. Of a white guy who married a black woman with black children. And in this video, the white guy was clowning black men and saying, you, you think I can't raise black boys? I raise them better than y'all do. This is type of woke shit that I'm talking about right here that makes white men like Nick Fuentes get on the internet and be comfortable saying nigga. This is why motherfuckers like this are dangerous. And we've let these Negroes go on too long saying whatever they want to say. All this anti-black male rhetoric is what it is. This is why motherfuckers like this are dangerous. And we've let these Negroes go on too long saying whatever they want to say. All this anti-black male rhetoric is what it is. We got too many PhDs screaming they woke. Smiling, Sleep on the land and take us off for a joke. The blacks I see, immigrants, tap dance, nigga shit. Homie, he ain't black like me. Ancestors fought and died with no guns. You hear disrespect and speak with a forked tongue. We march for togetherness. All we really seeing is a bunch of sell our motherfuckers round here on tell the shit. Separate better shit. We don't fuck with it, trick them sell it. Bitch. Tell it to the donkey and the elephant. Here for the benefits. Damn right, talking to you immigrants. Over here acting like you innocent. In your homeland, you don't fuck with blacks. But getting handouts and money off our tax. And we ain't getting shit but some feel good talk. And young black men outlined in white chalk. Time to spark change, the kind folks see Produced by Baz, inspired by Uncle D Give black men a voice, the only Umar's on Fridays And trust me, our doctor ain't voice, my people rejoice My lyrics ain't shooting and killing the black man Make a motherfucking choice What niggas do for money, clown and act a fool Wearing dresses, finessing money just for a school Tell it to these coons, on a plantation Made it a celebration, everybody to Zoom Listen in the room, so bundle up trick It's cold outside and he ain't taking no shit This is why they hate us Blood run deep, a generation of traitors They wanna see us weak, you ain't a part of the family Cold show the fuck you, black men ain't shit I'm sure the world will love you Head down long enough, 50 plus years You yelling that we ain't strong enough Took them benefits and ran with it It's May Day, took the kids away And now they Pookie and Ray Ray This is where we separate Word, feel me? We gotta keep our black, black woman safe. Why like you got spray paint on there? What's your name? Like you keep this shit moving, bro. We don't play like that, bro. I just okay. Okay, bro. We don't play like that. Like, look at your van, my nigga. This is some weird shit. Don't come popping around this shit, my nigga. Word, some other shit. What's the name of the block? I don't know. Bro, get the fuck out of here, my nigga. Real shit, bro. And keep it going fast, bro. Yo, that's some crazy, that's crazy, bro. Get it understood, cause real black men wish a motherfucker would. So buck if you want to. On the next flight, we do whatever we want to. Cause it can't come in everybody's favorite uncle. You got niggas with degrees enabling these motherfuckers by perpetuating, by, 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 by perpetuating these lies and negativity about black men. Black men don't have kids, you ain't even got no wife. 31% of y'all are married, 51% of you don't have kids, and you're not married. That's 82% of black men who ain't did shit or are doing it the right way. There's 18% of men out there with children outside of wedlock. And of that group, they are better fathers than men of other races who are married to their women. You black men are outstanding. You hear me? You are winning. Fuck what these PhD ass niggas are saying. You are winning. You are doing a great fucking job, especially considering what you had to do and deal with historically. Especially that. Nobody's saying that. These lying motherfuckers, man.
<laughs> What's up, everybody? Welcome to the broadcast. This is Dennis Sperling, also known as the Blizzard King, also known as Uncle D. I'd like to welcome you all here. Please hit the number one button if you can hear me clearly. Uh, let me know that you can hear me clearly by hitting the number one button. We got a barn burner tonight for you all. I think that you all are going to really appreciate this broadcast that we're going to have is going to be very enlightening. Um, it's going to open your, 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 it's going to open that third eye up. I'm sure. So I'm going to go ahead and put a little mood music in the back because we're going to need it. Uh, let me know if you can hear me. If you can hear me, hit the number one button. If you can hear me clearly, hit the number one button. I need to know that you can hear me clearly. And if you can, Hit the number one, but big shout out to everybody in the chat room. But uh, before we get started, I want to make sure you guys understand that I am trying to do things my way. When I say my way, uh, as you, you notice, you cannot contribute to the cash app. I'm sorry, you can't contribute to the super chat. Um, and the reason I that's been disabled is because they want 30% of everything I earn, which basically means for every 30 days I work, they get about $9 worth of money. I just don't think that's cool. Uh, slavery ended in 1865. I did not agree to those sort of terms. If Google would like to renegotiate with me, fine. But other than that, if, if my folks want to contribute to me after you uh, have heard me for a little while, the Cash App is right there on, on the screen. You guys are welcome to pay me for my time. Uh, big shout out to my man, Big Bass Life, Big Bass Life. Thank you so much for that beautiful, wonderful music rendition. The man is extremely talented. Uh, also, you saw me run the commercial for Co-Parenting with the Sperlings. If you haven't checked it out already, make sure you check it out. That's every Thursday. We're taking back Thursdays. Shout out to the good woman, the good sister, Crimson Cure. Uh, she's every week, you know, every Sunday, she does a review of uh, one of the one of the uh, broadcasts a big shout out to her for that thank you so much appreciate the support shout out to everybody who is in the chat room man my man jj diesel cowboy monk miss crow to chitty i don't know i hope i hope i said that right david mcdowell where all my new people at man if you just recently subscribed to the channel hit the number one button if you've been here for a minute man hit the thumbs up button let me know you've been here all my guys man Make sure you check out the Blizzard King. We had a good broadcast on the Blizzard King channel today. I hope y'all checked it out. Uh, y'all need to go check out the Blizzard King. Make sure you subscribe to the Blizzard King channel. Uh, before we get started, man, big shout out to my man, The Quiet Storm. And Mr. Irvin, thank you for being the first folks to contribute to the cash app. Now, um, here's the thing. Um, I'm going to make some people uncomfortable tonight. I already know that I am because we're going to talk about religion and we're going to talk about politics. Two things that you shouldn't talk about. But I think it's necessary. Very, very, very necessary. Now, the first thing I want to introduce you all to is this. Now, I'm not going to put this on my uh, channel here, even though I could. I'm going to put it where you can read it, where you can listen. Uh, this is a gentleman who is on... Uh, interviewed by Tucker Carlson, who was formerly a uh, person who was with Fox News. I want you to hear this. Hear for yourself. Sounds like you're looking to party. Yeah, pulled up in a bar outside and there's this guy that's introduced to me as Barack Obama. I had given Barack $250 to pay for Coke. I start putting a line on a CD tray to snort and next thing I know he's got a little pipe and he's smoking. So I just started rubbing my hand along his thigh to see where it was going and it went the direction I had intended it to go. Even though you had sex with him twice, you did cocaine with him, watched him smoke crack twice, you had no idea who he was. I had no idea who he was. He was just the obvious question. What was Obama like on crack? Um, is it your sense that that's who Obama is, just transactional or that he's bisexual or like, what is that? It definitely wasn't Barack's first time. And I would almost be willing to bet you it wasn't as long. The guy's running for president and credible information comes out that he's smoking crack and having sex with dudes. That seems like a story. Well, it would be. A All right. So uh, you guys can check that interview out over there. So this gentleman has come up and said that uh, our former half Kenyan, 
half white president that you all cherished and loved um, is a rainbow rider. Now, he's not the first president of the United States that's rode the rainbow. We've had several presidents of the United States who were suspected to be rainbow riders. That's not the issue that I have with Barack Obama. If he chooses to ride the rainbow in his personal life, that's between him and his wife and his family. My problem is you. When I talk about you, I'm talking about my people. Somebody type black people in the chat room. Somebody type FBA in the chat room. Somebody type foundational black Americans in the chat room. That's who I have a problem with. And uh, it's going to take a minute, but we're going to get there, okay? We're going to need a lot of Jesus tonight, so get your prayer books together. I need you to get all your hymns together, okay? I need you all to do that. Now, there's a specific reason that I have a problem with my people, okay? And I love my people. And that's why I sit up and talk to my people all the time, okay? Now, America welcomes all beliefs. We do, don't we? But it's the Christians in this country that are under attack. Now, America was never a Christian country. America was always a secular country. And it can't be a Christian country unless you take away people's rights under the First Amendment of freedom of expression. In other words, to practice the religions that they choose. Now, what I will say is this, what make America special is we got a lot of frontline soldiers for God who live in America. But it is Satan that's got a hold of America. Let me say that again. I would argue that we have some of the best soldiers for God right here in the United States. But Satan has gotten hold of America. What do I mean? Well, let me give you a verse. Ephesians 6 and 12. For we wrestle not with not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Somebody type Trojan horse in the chat room. Somebody type Trojan horse in the chat room. Now, what does Ephesians 6 and 12 mean? It, 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 it means this is where Invisible spirits, spirits that are, not a, that are not tangible to you, to the naked eye. Principalities is what they call them. Satan's henchmen. Got so many of y'all manipulated. Many don't comprehend Satan and his legion of invisible evil spirits, principalities, and henchmen. See, some of y'all think y'all slicker than Satan. But remember, Satan is a creation of God, and he never lost his powers. He is a master manipulator. Somebody type master manipulator in the chat room. He is more intelligent and wise than society gives him credit for. That's why they call him the great deceiver. And this is mankind's undoing. I don't want to see anybody live in hell and damnation. But sadly, so many don't realize that it's real. And that's where this nation is bound because what do we know about the wages of sin? Somebody type wages of sin in the chat room. Now I'm gonna get off the subject, but I'm gonna get right back on it in the midst. Shout out to all my Muslim friends. My Muslim brothers refer to God as Allah. And oh my God, that scares the bejesus out of some of y'all, don't it? Many of my Christian brothers and sisters are angered when we refer to God as Allah. 
But let me let me let me share some information with you. Most religious scholars and historians agree that historically Jesus principally spoke Galilean, which is a dialect of Amaric, Amaric. And there are various words for God in Amaric. Some of them are Eli, E L I, some of them are E L A H I. Some of them are A L A H I, Allah, or some of them are Allah, depending on the dialect. And the word sounds almost identical to the Arabic word Allah. So when our brothers say Allah, they're basically using the word that Jesus would use. So I'm not going to run for my Muslim brothers, but they need to hear this too. And the reason I bring Islam up is because it's one of the fastest growing religions in the world. And I'm going to explain why. Christianity isn't what it used to be because modern society has diluted the word of God with their own worldly, worldly ideas and priorities. And this makes it harder to believe if there is a God because our value system has been so corrupted and yet we still call ourselves Christians. To many, the Christian principles have become nothing more than hollow lies. The Christians don't obey the law and the commandments. So what principles do they have left to use? Christianity has become invaded and ignored in exchange for sinful and abominable beliefs. Islam, on the other hand, is very strict with its rituals. And it's very rigid, whether you believe it or not. Whether you believe in Islam or not, in the teachings of the Holy Quran and the Prophet Muhammad, peace be unto him. When a person tries to taint Islam with modern secularism, secularism is cut off quickly. What I found in my studies is that early Islamic beliefs and traditional practices of Christianity were more in line, not the same, but they were very defensive about what they believed. They kept it strict. We as Christians, in our belief system, we've become diluted and lost touch. And I'm talking about Americans. American Christians have moved away from our biblical adherence. Jesus Christ said this in John 14 and 15. If anyone loves me, he will keep my commands. Have we done that? Some of y'all don't understand. What he's saying, in other words, is don't change your beliefs because of what you see others doing or not doing. If you truly love you, you will do what I ask you to do. But if you're so quick to give it up because of what you're taught, because of people that you idolize, somebody type idolize in the chat room, somebody type Trojan horse in the chat room. If you're so quick to give it up, that means you weren't a real believer to begin with. Jesus didn't quit because his own people didn't believe him and wanted to kill him. Remember when Jesus went home and they ran him up out of there? He couldn't even perform any miracles when he got home. He had to leave. And what did he say? A prophet is loved everywhere but his hometown. He had to get out of Jerusalem. So why did you quit your belief in Jesus? Why did you quit your belief in what the Bible has to say? God's word. 
You quit because you feared something else besides God. You loved something else besides God. You revered something else beside God. To my black people, hear me out. I know it's taking a while for me to land this plane. I, I get it. Just hang in there. Let's get a little history lesson going on. Before we got to this country, we had local African slave religions, and I'm using the word religion loosely, that were rooted in cultural forms of Western and Central African religion. You heard about them. You know. You, you, you know what I'm talking about. The different deities in West Africa, you heard about that. When you analyze these religions, the typical features of these religions include central concern with powerful beings of extraordinary of the extraordinary realm. And the world, it, 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 and it was it was related to phenomenon that Africans experienced in the world, and they discussed it in the form of their ideas, and they referred to it as spirits. Now, here's the thing that's unique about Africans, and what we call Africans, those people on the in the African continent. African religions had established a tradition of incorporating elements of theology and ritual from cultures other than their own. It's why you can take a little Ashante and put it on top of a little Christianity or take a little bit of, uh, 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 in, in my mind is, is, is blonde, drawing a blank right now, um, but what's the African god of war over there in West Africa? What's his name? Y'all, Brother Tariq Nasheed brings him up all the time. I forget the word. I forget the word. But you can incorporate some of that into some Islam. But here's the thing. That tradition didn't die when we ended up on those, uh, in these different locations here in the United States. Ogun, right. That's it. Ocean, Ogun, all of it. See, the history of refashioning and blending and it continued in the religion of African slaves and resulted uh, from the dispersion of, of black people throughout the transatlantic slave trade. That's why you have what they call voodoo in Haiti and all these different things, which is where they incorporated those traditional African beliefs into Christianity and so on and so forth. If you go to some of these Cuban restaurants, they will have a saint sitting in that restaurant, and then behind it, they will have what would be a traditional African deity. So that's what they had there. Now, they also had Islam. And look, look, all my Christian folk, just hold your horses. We learning something. Somebody type, we learning something in the chat room. Somebody type, learn ya in the chat room. Okay? Just give it a minute. While the presence of Islam, and I've talked about this before, it dates back to the 8th century. And now Islam is, is, has spread throughout the modern states of Senegal, the Gambia, uh, Guinea, Burkina Faso, Niger, Mali, and Nigeria. It didn't just take hold. It was a gradual and complex process. See, the history of Islam in West Africa happened in three stages. Containment, mixing, and reform. This is what the scholars say. This ain't what I say. The first stage, the African kings contain Muslim influence by segregating Muslim communities. In the second stage, African rulers who, remember, they still had these traditional African beliefs. They blended Islam with the local traditions 
as the population selectively appropriated Islamic practices. In the final stage, the African Muslims pressed reforms in effort to, to, to rid their societies of the mixed practices and implement Sharia. So remember when um, the African king migrated, uh, he went over to, uh, what's the richest man in the world? I don't know why my, my mind is, is uh, African king, king who, who, who traveled to Mecca. What was his name? And he passed out all that gold. What was his name? Huh? What was his name? Let me get, let me get that. Let me get that together. His name was Mansa Musa. So from 2080 to 1337, he was the king of the Mali empire. He traveled over to Mecca, passed out gold on the way back, took thousands of people with him, disrupted the financial system. He passed out so much gold. He was one of those kings that began to what? Implement Islam, traditional Islam. And when he came back, that was his thing. That was what he was doing, okay? Now, the thing is, much of what we know about West African history comes from the accounts of Arab and North African geographers and historians. That's how prominent Islam was. You see? Now, how did they get these people to go from their traditional beliefs to Islam? Well, they use economic motivations. The draw of Islam's uh, spiritual message, of course. And then there was prestige associated with being uh, a, a Muslim at that time. And then, of course, the influence of Arab literacy. In other words, your educated were Islamic. That, that, that's where the schools were. So the more elite people became Muslim just because that's how they were educated. Just like going to private school, oftentimes it's Catholic. And so you get influenced by the Catholic Church. Now, Christianity was also present in the African continent. And it predated its, its existence in Europe. Listen, Christianity in Africa first arrived in Egypt in 50 AD. By the end of the second century, it had reached the region of Carthage, which is on the north coast of Africa, the continent. By the fourth century, um, places like Ethiopia, Eritrea, became one of the first regions in the world to adopt Christianity as its official religion. And many, at least three of the Nubian kingdoms followed two centuries later. From the late 5th and early 6th centuries, the region included several Christian Berber kingdoms, which that was that, that area all the way across North Africa. And remember, those were the people that were, you know, dipping down in, into Mali and so on and so forth. So Christianity was everywhere that was relevant to us. Now, because of the Islamic conquest into North Africa, it put pressure on those Christians to convert to Islam due to what? due to some of the special taxation imposed upon non-Muslims. In other words, if you're a Muslim, you can keep your money. If you're not a Muslim, you got to pay up. So that's how that worked. Now, I lay all that down to say this, and I'm going to break here and come right back, but I say all that to say, black folks had religion and had God and knew God and knew God's word, in the form of Christianity and Islam and all, all the major teachings before we even got to this land. White folks didn't give us religion. We had it before we got here. And we were always a God-fearing, God-loving people. And we knew the word and we knew the practices. Keep that in mind. We'll be right back. Y'all make sure y'all do what you do. Matter of fact, I'm going to get y'all a little Jesus because we're going to need all the Jesus we can get Tonight, praise God. We need all somebody, somebody type. We need Jesus tonight. Hallelujah. We definitely do. Y'all make sure y'all hit the number one button, but we're going to get some Jesus up in here tonight. I'll be right back.
Welcome back, welcome back to the broadcast. I appreciate you guys for hanging in there with me. I, and I know it's taking a minute to land this, but but here's the thing. Uh, religious beliefs amongst black Americans, spirituality, that's what our belief in God, that's what got us through our darkest hour. And prior to the pandemic, black Americans were by far the group most likely to attend religious services. Uh, regularly with 45 percent of us attending at least once a month think about that before the pandemic we went to church 45 percent that's almost half the population today it's like 30 percent 30 percent of black americans attend now that's higher than whites who attend at 27 percent but it's less than Hispanics who attend at 31%. So this is who we are. Over 400 years after we got to these shores, when we began coming to these shores, we still have a belief in God. We still know the word. We keep the word with us. So what happened? Somebody type what happened in the chat room. Somebody type Trojan horse in the chat room. How is it that we can be the most religious group of people on the planet or in the United States and still be down with all this debauchery? See, if you really believe in the only son of God, Jesus Christ, then nothing will separate you from him, including your favorite singer. Not to mention your favorite ex-black president. Right? Irrespective of how you feel or what other so-called Christians are doing, that's not what you do. Revelations 3 and 16 says, so then because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth. We know that. See, let's get to down to the nitty gritty. We as Christians, we need to stick together against the satanic agenda that's been foist upon us. Christians must stand firm and be fearless in their beliefs in Jesus Christ, if you're a Christian. If you're not a Christian, this ain't your conversation. And we must demand that others respect our beliefs. Where are you going with this, Uncle D? This is different. Let me tell you something, family. You allow your pride in the accomplishments of a certain half-white, half-black, have Kenyan politician corrupt your love for your righteous Lord and Savior. Come to find out your black Jesus, Barack Hussein Obama has a former lover that's been around for some time who he apparently smoked crack with and had several sexual sessions with. Now, there's always been rumors that old buddy was a heathen. Apparently, one of his ex-girlfriends came out and said this man has dreams. She got letters of this man having dreams about having sex with other men. That's your, that's your savior. Why am I saying that? Again, Barack Obama is not the first heathen president. He's not the first president rumored to be a, 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 a rainbow rider. That's not the problem I have with him. Hell, I got a list of them. Lyndon Baines Johnson, Dwight Eisenhower, George Washington, 
Chester A. Arthur, I think he lived with a man. Abraham Lincoln, James Buchanan. It's about 11 hell. Uh, <laughs> Bill Clinton. John F. Kennedy. Google it. That's not the problem that I have with Barack Obama. My problem with Barack Obama is you, black people. What do you mean? <laughs> Why are you getting on us, Uncle D? What do we do? We, we ain't do nothing. It's Barack Obama's agenda that he put upon America with African-American support. Mind you, the most religious group of people in the world. And, so I, and I went through a whole diatribe for the first 30 minutes of this broadcast explaining to you how both Christianity and Islam are not European religions. Didn't I just say that? Huh? Didn't I just explain to y'all that that predated its existence in Europe? So you've been had it. Somebody type heathen agenda in the chat room. This heathen agenda is sinful and goes against what God wants for his people. The idea that the most religious group of people in America, the most church going group of people in America would be so enamored and so prideful and so worshipful and idolize an individual that they would allow him to help bring about the demise of America. I know that the most high is disappointed at you. I know that he is. How could he not be? And for some of you all are hard-headed. I challenge you to contest this. See, as I said before, we've had other presidents who are suspect. That's nothing new. It's a lot of weirdos out there doing weird stuff. But this is the problem that I have with old Barry. The Obama administration's record on LGBT community, preventing bullying and hate crimes against LGBT Americans. What is that? It sounds good. I guess. This is what this department allowed the transgender to use your toilet. Supporting LGBT health, same sex, domestic partnership, all this. Repealing Don't Ask, Don't Tell, ending the Legal Defense and Defense of Marriage Act, DOMA, protecting LG Americans against discrimination, taking steps to ensure alphabet equality in housing and crime prevention, advancing and protecting the rights of the alphabet person around the world. Around the world? Yeah, around the world. Recognizing alphabet history and contribution. Look, look, look. Show me the fact sheet for black people. Nevertheless, amongst all this gobbledygook, is what we have now, acceptance. We have God's people accepting something that the Most High referred to in the scripture as an abomination. And you fell for it. But it because it came at you as a Trojan horse. Barack Obama was black people's chosen Trojan horse. And you were so enamored by the fact that you finally got a black man, you the symbol of acceptance for all you Negroes in America. They finally accept us. They're making one of us their ruler. And he ain't got nothing to do with you. Matter of fact, if you look into his ancestry, he was a slave owner. He was descended from slave owners. 
on the white side of his family. He related to all other presidents. It's obvious that the man ushered in a heathen agenda, but you still protect him when you should condemn him. How far have we fallen from the most high's wishes for us, brothers and sisters? We used to be the face of justice. And now we're the face of the rainbow movement. Some of you all say, well, you're attacking the black man. That's the crabs in the barrel mentality. We should be here uplifting black men, not tearing them down. I don't uplift heathens. I condemn heathens. The rest of you are saying stuff like, well, how does this affect my everyday life? He was a two-term president. He left office in 2017. He can't run again. Somebody should have brought this up in 1999 or 2008 or 2012. See, the truth is, family, if you really think about it, it was that Trojan horse who ushered in this area of intensified debauchery that we have. It wasn't like this before 2008. The most you heard was don't ask, don't tell. Now come to find out, you see what this man's personal life is like. And he allowed that to drive that into policy. And y'all still worshiping this man. See, the truth is, those laws and those policies and the heathenism is at the center of breakdown of morality and values in society, the society that we know. Why? Because it attacks the glue that holds society together, the family. You can believe what this man said or not, I don't know. But what I do know is this. I do know that Barack Obama's policies go against the word of the most high. They go against the word of the Christian Bible that I read. It goes against the word of the Muslim Quran that many of you read, my Hebrew brothers. It goes against what the Holy Torah said. So how can you call yourself a people of God? How can you call yourself God's chosen people if you don't condemn this? Because see, the first step to saving your soul, my brothers, is condemning it. You're more influenced by what others are doing. I know y'all don't like what I got to say. I already saw the comments on my Instagram page. You attacking the black, black president, the black man. A Trojan horse is a Trojan horse. And I wouldn't be the Blizzard King if I didn't turn the cold shoulder toward heathenism. Who do you think you're dealing with? And now they're trying to push it worldwide upon our African brothers over in the motherland, and they're not going for it. And they're using you as a Trojan horse to take it to the motherland. Well, see, your African-American brothers, they accept it. Look at them. They're, they're accepting of it. Why don't you... Negroes over in Africa accepted. Haven't you always looked up to these black Americans? Barack Obama? You, the people of God, are being used. The most religious people, the most spiritual people, 
the most God-loving people in America are used to push this around the world. And you scared to say anything about it. Now again, what Barack Obama has done in his personal life, he joins about 10 other presidents that have done the same thing. That's not my issue. My issue are the policies that he has in place, which, should, which have ushered in and put a stamp of approval on what we have now. Back before 2008, we had people that did, did, did have these alternative lifestyles. But at least back then, you could what? Condemn it and say, that's not me. Now in California, they will take your child away from you. If you talk against that rainbow ride and agenda. Earlier, we talked about freedom of expression. But they've taken it away from us Christians. Funny thing is, if a Muslim says the same thing, they leave him alone. You got to make a choice, brothers. You got to save your souls. Don't be used. The law is the law. It is legal in this, in this land to practice whatever lifestyle you choose. But I'm not talking about the law of any one land. I'm talking about your soul. I'm talking about your salvation. I'm talking about your moral compass. You got to choose between Christ and man. You got to choose between the Holy Spirit and the rainbow riders. And you're going to have to stand up and be men and do it. And you have you can't be bamboozled, hoodwinked, and led astray just because you're enamored by the color of somebody's skin. So I uh, expect what I expect. This may get me banned from YouTube. May get me demonetized. You know, all that stuff that's going around. But it needs to be said. Because, see, there wouldn't be no Barack Obama if there were not black Americans in the United States. We were the ones that ushered him in. We were the ones that put our stamp of approval on him. We were the ones that supported him. You, we, the most church-loving group of people in America. We allowed this man to come amongst us as a Trojan horse. We idolized this man. Still do some of y'all. When you should be turning a cold shoulder to this man for his heathenistic uh, uh, agenda that he pushed in. In the name of equality. Open-mindedness. You can be so open-minded, your brains can fall out. Nevertheless, it's about that time. I hope that you have learned something tonight. Hell, I didn't gave y'all four or five scriptures that you're going to have to look up. I've given you statistics. I put the whole Barack Obama uh, uh, rainbow uh, uh, alphabet itinerary out for you. So I know you've learned something. You learned a little bit about West African history. You learned a little bit about the history of Christianity and Islam. You learned a lot. And some of you guys who can dig through that a little bit, you learned a little bit about what them Hebrew Israelites are talking about. Those so-called indigenous African religious beliefs. That's what the brothers are talking about when they say we were Hebrews. But I'll leave that to them. Nevertheless, if you learned something, if you moved, if I've caused you to think, 
if you've picked up something, if you've been inspired in some way, if you're going to carry yourself in a different way because of what you heard, then you owe me. And you need to pay me for my time. That's what you need to do. That being the case, run me them cash apps. We'll be right back. Run me them cash apps. We need 18 more cash apps, and I'll be back. 18 more, and I'll be back. Come on, pay me for my time. Show your appreciation for what I'm doing by paying me for my time. The collection plate is now out. <laughs>
To the broadcast welcome back to the broadcast man let's go ahead and get this this music cranked up i'm gonna put the link in the chat room man uh we still about 10 cash apps short but i want to get the show started again i want to get this broadcast popping because i think it's important i want to get you guys feedback on this i want to get you prepared for those uh family uh upcoming holiday season conversations with your grandma and your big mama and your mama I need you to arm you with your, with the words that you need to speak. You need to go ahead and hit them in the Jesus. Somebody type, hit them in the Jesus when you get to grandma's house. What would Jesus do? <laughs> Grandma, would, would Jesus approve of Barack Obama's uh, agenda? Would Jesus approve of this, this agenda that we have going on right now, this, this, this rainbow agenda? <laughs> Probably not. That's how you deal with grandma, hit her with the Jesus. Uh, hit her right there in the Jesus, bam. Uh, but anyway, I'm going to put join the conversation. Uh, you guys make sure y'all join the conversation. The link is in the chat room if you want to come on in and chop it up about this. Yeah, man, it's shocking. But again, we all kind of knew old buddy was, you know, a little, you know, we 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 all kind of knew. Man. We all. Big shout out to my man, Alvin Holden. All we need is nine more uh, cash apps to get this thing popping right. But, uh, man, big shout out to Alvin Holden. Shout out to Mr. Bardry. Shout out to Mr. Irvin 
big super major fantastic outstanding shout out to deacon salty balls you can get the rock and roll for that thank you for the hundred dollars brother i appreciate you yes sir uh we're gonna call him martin we're gonna call him the freelancer we're gonna call him jerome thank you so much mr charlie thank you will thank you mr williams thank you mr jackson mr jennings uh thank you so much mr nayami Yan- nayamiki Yanamike. thank you so much brother mr maxi mr will mr urban mr storm thank you so much man i appreciate y'all and let me give a big super fantastic shout out to mrs mrs crow t jetty thank you so much for the cash app and uh she just said look the cash app is pinned right there if you want to send a message to me i'm not the cash app the, the paypal is pinned so if you want to send a message to me you want me to read something on on the broadcast just go ahead and do that man send that and that's pinned to the top uh right there it's pinned to the top of the chat room but again the link to come on up in here and chop it up with me is in the chat room too if y'all want to come through cool in the meantime what we're gonna do is we're gonna play some of these fantastic tunes from mr big bass live big bass life because uh the man let, let lets the world have it with these lyrics and these beats matter of fact we're gonna say we're gonna let them speak to jesus hallelujah 80 of black women in this day and age it don't matter how old or young they are they have a general dislike and hatred for you mm. that's your real climate brother see i'm not telling you something that you ain't already felt i'm telling you something that you know i think it's more too i truly think it's more too I couldn't imagine what it would be like as a black man to to want to fuck these bitches, to want to wife them up and have babies. But the majority of your population, you want a black woman, right? But these hoes is crazy. These hoes really crazy out here. Like, it's an abundance of you that think that all men are dogs, but you, we all know it means black men. You don't ever roast white men, Mexican men, Indian men, Asian men. You don't ever have nothing bad to say about them. But when we say all men are dogs, you really think it's black men that are dogs. Because the undertone of all relationship conversations is black men ain't shit. Why these black men ain't doing this? I can't bond with y'all, sis. I cannot bond with y'all when you have a general dislike and vitriol and hatred for our male counterpart. Do you not understand how goddamn psychotic that is? Black family left in pieces. You don't talk to me, you speak to Jesus. All that love keep it. Passport, we out, we on the beaches. Sunday service, tell it to the preacher. Yeah. Black family left in pieces. You don't talk to me, you speak to Jesus. All that love keep it. Passport, we out, we on the beaches. Sunday service, tell it to the preacher. She got degrees, educated, lot of independent talk. All the girlfriends single, ain't nobody get to walk. All the men are at the airport, overseas trip. Wanna fight mid-flight, told us all to leave shit. You're lonely and you're desperate. Family used to matter, only black lives. Got you trying to buy some baby batter. Your politics are off, why you fucking up the nation? You can stay on candy land, bitch, I'm off the plantation. The house and the car when the bank account keep. Get your zaddy, ain't nobody gonna replace me. Fuck your PhD. What you eat, I don't shit Why you think I'm booking fights to get away from you, trick? All the BBLs and the cumbrellas All the weave dot hoes need to run, fellas All the baby mama mamas and the free sluts We out of here, you can have it, homie, keep up All the BBLs and the cumbrellas All the weave dot hoes need to run, fellas All the baby mama mamas and the free sluts We out of here, you can have it, homie, keep up Black family left in pieces You don't talk to me, you speak to Jesus All that love, keep it Passport, we out, we on the beaches Sunday service, tell it to the preacher Yeah Black family left in pieces You don't talk to me, you speak to Jesus All that love, keep it Passport, we out, we on the beaches Sunday service, tell it to the preacher Yeah Yeah, you mad cause that same dude done hopped on the, on the flight He done went down to Cartagena and he got him a bad one on his own. He said, an all-you-can-eat buffet. A all-you-can-eat bad bitch buffet. How about that? Wow. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. What's 
up, what's up? Welcome back to the broadcast, man. So I think we've had an interesting conversation today. Uh, we're still uh, waiting for some folks to come in. Maybe you guys don't want to touch this. I can understand. You want to come in for this. You don't want to come up in here and get out of this. No, you don't want none of this. This might get you fired from your little jobs or something like that. But I think it needed to be said. I think there's a lot of things that need to be said. And I think we as, uh, I mean, hell, they're going to demonetize you any goddamn way. They're going to put you off YouTube anyway. At least get put off for a reason. You know, at least get put off for a reason because you're trying to help black men save them, their souls. And when the next Trojan horse comes along in black skin, right? When the next one comes along in black skin, you won't fall for it. Shout out to my man, Too Much Moxie. Welcome in the bro Welcome to the broadcast, brother. Good to have you back. So, uh, you know, I said a lot today, man, and I tried to answer all the responses. That, That's not it. I don't believe in Jesus. That's a white man's religion. But Jesus wasn't white, and Christianity didn't start in Europe. So what are you talking about? You see what I mean? So, bro, what are your thoughts on this, this conversation? And for those of you guys who don't know, uh, let me let me go on ahead and run this back. This is what sparked up this conversation. I actually saw this on Willie D's channel. You guys know who Willie D is. Uh, let me go ahead and pull it up. I want to make sure y'all uh, see this. It's like you're looking to party. Yeah, pulled up in a bar outside, and there's this guy that's introduced to me as Barack Obama. I had given Barack $250 to pay for Coke. I start putting a line on a CD tray to snort. And he said, I gave Barack Obama $250 for some yay, okay? And then I put it on the line. It went the direction I had intended it to go. Even though you had sex with him twice, you did cocaine with him, watched him smoke crack twice. You had no idea who he was. I had he, no idea who he was. The man already admitted that he smoked cocaine. You understand? I'm talking about, you know, y'all's former half black president. So we knew that was part of the game. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And there's a lot that goes along with the crack smoking. You see what I'm saying? Uh, especially, you know, you ain't got no money to afford it. But either way, brother, what are your thoughts on this? And look, if the man is, I don't know what the man is. I'm not even concerned about what he's doing in, in the White House, who he's doing it with. My problem is when I look at this, this agenda of his, how did we as the most religious group of people in America, right, allow this dude to just, just put this outright thing, this agenda, which goes against our religious views, I mean, fundamentally goes against our, how do we allow him to slide that up in there? We just like, okay, it's okay. Why is it okay? You know, it's like we put Barack Obama before we put God. Go ahead, brother. The word, the floor is open, sir. Go ahead. Just tell you, man, once again, man, uh, your topic of choice, man, and uh, what it, and your, your eloquent speaking about the situation. Um, man, I mean, you know, I remember, uh, I remember voting. I remember um, the feeling of hope, the feeling of uh, we, we we came a long way, the feeling of, you know, I remember my dad telling me we'll never have a black president. And then mm -hmm. Barack Yeah, um, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I remember the feeling of thinking, man, uh, we've come so far, you know. I, 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 I remember my dad finally accepted. Yeah, I, I, I can go back and remember when Jesse Jackson ran, right? And that was like hilarious, right? You know, um, it was like uh, it, it was like we never seen a well-spoken brother. Mm -hmm. That the Trojan horse. We never seen such a well-spoken black man carry himself in such a way. I mean, they built him up, and we didn't we didn't think about how he came out of nowhere. We were just uh, we were just. We was he crying, bro. We all cried. We were like, the president. Yeah. We were Oprah. crying, bro. We was crying when he got sworn yeah. in with a little family. Right. Go ahead, tell the truth. But we also remember that there were all kind of gay rumors going out about this. There was all kind of, and we just overlooked it. We ignored it. all of that. We ignored that. We ignored that it all. No matter. We had black Jesus in person. We had black Jesus. Black Jesus came down to save. We were finally accepted. <laughs> they accepted one of us. This right. big bad society has finally accepted us poor Negroes and finally told them, you all right. They put their stamp, the white folks have 
finally put their stamp of approval on us. And we was just enamored by that because we care about what white folk think more than we care about what God thinks. You see what I'm saying? That's about me. This is what I want you guys to understand. See, I'm not mad at Satan for doing what Satan do. Satan is the great deceiver. I'm mad at you people. And I say somebody type you people in the chat room. I'm tired. Of, I'm, I'm mad at you people, the most spiritual, religious group of people in America for allowing Satan to come up and just right in your face. How did y'all, how did you black folks let that happen? How, did, how Matter of fact, I think it was some preachers standing next to him. Even in the second term, when he had, after he had ushered in that, that agenda. Remember, we was waiting in like he going to do something for us next. The, the, yeah. the, the rainbow people got theirs. The immigrants got theirs. <laughs> Hold on. The dwarves got theirs. You know, the midgets got theirs. <laughs> the people born with one eye got theirs. And we was like, we going to get ours next. We know, he, we know black Jesus is going to come through for us. But he yeah. never did. Well, my, he never did. That's my thing. Go ahead, brother. What would you like to add? You know, we, we blame it on him having a Republican Party. Oh, he couldn't, mm. he couldn't get much done because, you know, not. you know, the Republicans don't want to be bipartisan and they don't want to come together and, and yeah. get the bill. But we're not understanding that, you know, they, what they're putting on top of these laws, they're putting these underlying laws in there. Oh, well, we will we will write this law in, but you got to add this agenda in with it. And, and, and we were rejecting. We were like, why are they rejecting it? They must be racist. They must be this. They must but, be that. I mean, well, we into well, the here's, here's my thing. Too too much mock. He couldn't get nothing done, but he got all this done. No, no, let me. He got preventing bully and hating crimes against alphabet people. Right. Supporting alphabet health. Uh, repealing "Don't Ask, Don't Tell," ending legal defense of the Defense of Marriage Act. Uh, protecting the alphabet Americans against discrimination and. Uh, taking steps to ensure alphabet equality in housing and crime prevention, uh, advancing and protecting the rights of alphabet persons around the world. My God, recognizing alphabet history and contribute. Well, but how did he get all that done? That's if he couldn't do it, well, either he can do something or he can't do nothing. See, can't. That's what I'm saying. It seemed to me, hold on, it, se it seemed to me, you know, I'm, I'm going to pull a little what they call a little common sense out. It seemed to me he did what he wanted to do. It seemed to me he went in there with an agenda of heathenism. He didn't care about you Negroes. We talking about a crackhead right here. This is a crackhead who used to give up his booty to old white men. He didn't care about you Negroes. And y'all let him in, in front of your face. He did it right in front of you, Bible thumping religious folks face, and y'all still defending him. Explain that. The Bible refers to that as an abomination. So look, here's what I want you to do. Just stop calling yourselves Christians. Because that's confusing. That's right. Just stop calling yourselves Christian. Stop calling yourself Muslims. Stop calling yourself people of God. Don't take your black ass to church no more. That's what I'm trying to explain to y'all. Because you got to pick a side at this point. Black mm -hmm. folks, you can't have it both ways. You right. gonna have to pick a side. That's right. People are tired. We got a country. We got a society of black people that's going to hell in a handbasket. Right. And you call yourself Christian? Just say I'm not a Christian. Just say I'm not Muslim. Just say I don't believe in God. I want to do what the hell I want to do. And go on about your business, man. Because that's confusing to people like me who are trying to do better by ourselves. You can't support this and that. that that's not going to work. You can't do both of these things. You're going to have to pick a side. Yeah. And just because that man is black, let me tell you something. And you young folk that may never heard it. All skin folk and kin folk. That's a Trojan horse right there. And you idolize that man. You put that man up on a pedestal beyond your own beliefs. Y'all got Jesus all up here. I ain't, look, go to a black person. 
go to somebody. They got Jesus up on the wall. Y'all got more Jesus in your house than the white folks. And white, you got that's what you got. And you allow this to happen. That means you fallen, family. I just want you to think about that. Shout out to my man G Boot twenty seven eighty six. How you doing, brother? Welcome, doing, welcome, welcome. I'm How's doing going, fine. Man? I'm you doing good? fine. I'm doing good. Uh, shout out to your guest, Too Much Moxie, as well, brother. Good evening to both of you. What would you like to add to the conversation, brother? Well, uh, thank you for having me on in this open discussion. I'm very proud of the work that you've done, uh, Dennis. You, I want to say that. Uh, all praises to the most high. Yeah, all praise to God. I want to mention, add on what the brother was saying, and also my experiences I remember when Barack Obama was running for president back in 2008, I was a student on Southern University's campus at that time. And there was just so much excitement for this man. Yes. You could not, if you said anything negative about him in any way, shape or form, you would be ostracized. And I was one of the few people that questioned just exactly how this man came about because people don't do research. They go off what a person looks like. Like he has a beautiful wife. Michelle looks nice in the dress. The kids are beautiful. The daughters are beautiful. And that's all they think about. And a lot of people didn't know that Barack Obama was uh, mentored by a guy by the name of Zbigniew Brzezinski, who wrote a book called The Grand Chess Board. And that was explaining how the United States at that time uh, and still do trying to occupy the oil in those areas. Uh, the other thing, a lot of people, you know, um, I can tell you this too. It was just, if you spoke out against Barack Obama, it was like talking against Jesus Christ. That's how. He yeah, was. that's what I'm saying. And he was, and he yeah. was not, and we have to realize something. He was not Jesus Christ. He was Herod. King Herod was the one that ordered the slaughter of the innocents. And Barack Obama even said out of his own mind, he didn't want his daughters punished if they had a bait for having a baby. So he was okay. Listening to what he was saying with aborting his own grandkids. The aborting his descent. Now, I listen to that and look at the people he supports and what he stands behind. And to the people also that make the excuse that, well, he had a Republican Congress. He didn't have that. His first two years, mm -hmm. he had a Democratic Congress. Right. So, if he wanted to do things, if he wanted to do stuff for black people, that was the time. We didn't need uh, Joe Lewis. We needed Muhammad Ali. Mm -hmm. We needed somebody to actually go in there and bust stuff up. When Andrew, you know this as well, Dennis, y'all brothers are a little older than me, but when Maynard Jackson was mayor of Atlanta, uh, Dutch Morial, mayor of Atlanta, but Maynard in particular, when he revitalized that airport, he made sure that 80% of the contracts went to blacks. Mm -hmm. And he basically told those white boys, 80% of a contract, which means you get 20%, is better than nothing. See, and, look, here's, the thing. Here's, here's the thing, man. And I don't want to narrow this down to race. See, what I'm talking about is your souls. What I'm talking about, are we Christian? Do we believe in God or do we not believe in God? Because if we believe in God and we believe in God's word, how do we get behind and still support a man who push policies that go in, that fly in the face of what the most high wants for us? You see, this is this is where I am. See, it, look, look, whatever Barack Obama did in his home life, there's 10 other presidents. There's one president that actually lived with a man in the White House. Yeah. We cuddle up together in the White House. You see what I'm saying? So the, this is not the first gay man who was the president. Matter of fact, he's not the first uh, uh, man who's been on drugs as the president. But if we had a drug addict in the office who legalized all the cocaine, said that children over the age, under the age of 13, must be administered a dose of heroin once a month, we'd be like, oh, hell no. You see what I'm saying? But well, that's bad for us. That goes against what we believe. But we allowed this man with his agenda, black people did, because of the color of his skin, we allowed this devil to come amongst us. We allowed this charlatan, this Satan to come amongst us. You see what I'm saying? And push these I policies. And we still support him. 
See, this is not about black. This is about good versus bad. This is about God's word versus uh, 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 this this uh, worldly agenda that we have. That's what I'm talking about tonight. That right. man can put his penis wherever he wants to. My question is, how is it that we as black people still support this degenerate agenda of his? That's the question that I have. Anybody else who wants to come in, the link is in the chat room. Uh, who else wants to jump in? Man, too much moxie. What would you like to add to that? And then we'll get to, to G. Well, you know, uh, if, if, if we're going biblical, and and, and, and we should, um, you know, um, we got to, you know, we got see, the problem is we have preachers stepping in the pulpit of politics, right? Mm -hmm. So you got, you got people saying that Obama was a Christian. How can you be a Christian if you're pushing that agenda? Well, you, you got a pastor to approve him, right? How can you be a Christian if you support that agenda? Just well, stop proved. calling yourself a Christian. Right. See, this is what I want people to do. Under the bus. Let's begin to separate the wheat from the chafe. Stop cool. allowing them to call themselves Christians. Because, see, the Muslims don't let... Did y'all hear that part where I said they stick rigidly to their beliefs and they don't allow people to come in with... Y'all didn't hear that. See, I, it's a it's a lead up to this that I can always pull back in and plug in. Let's be more like them. Let's be a little bit more exclusive with our club that we call Christianity. So we, we can eliminate the confusion because that seems to be what's happening right now. But uh, go ahead, G. What what you want to say on that? Well, I just was going to say, that if I could just clarify, the reason why I brought the race thing up was because earlier we mentioned, like, he was the first black president mm -hmm. and everybody in you. And black people were trying to what Brother Moss was saying. They wanted to see something like that. And I am just was talking about even in terms of his policies, they did not benefit. Honestly, he didn't do anything specifically for the opportunity. But... To stay on topic to what you're saying and uh, what's going on with the world, this is all by design of what we're seeing. Uh, if you look at, and there are some factual basis to it, and I'm sure you're aware of the National Security Memorandum back in 2000, it talked about the believe that that memorandum that was written by Kissinger certain lifestyles well, choices were also put into that to reduce that so this is something that we're seeing by design uh when we're see here's the thing brother how do we as god's people see here's the thing all of this could be going on in the world but how do we as god's people allow this to slip past us you see people, what I'm saying? I, I, I want all, somebody type FBA in the chat room. People's conscience. 45% 45, 45 church attendance at least once a month. We supposed to be religious people. We've been had religion. We've been loved the Lord. How do you now sanction this debauchery that's going on in the community? Even though it is going on, and it's always going to be sin in the world. How do we allow this to get in? I'm going to tell you how. Because we we got one foot in and one foot out. And so it come in with us. You know, they say the devil is in this house. You brought him in with you. That's what I'm saying. We need to begin as men to cleanse our souls. We need to look within and determine what we will accept and what we won't accept. Because that's where it starts. See, we accepted Barack Obama. We look past the fact that he was a crackhead and had this shady past because our egos, because our low self-esteem said we finally got a black man that can win and we just want to be accepted by white folks. And we were so proud. And what do they say about pride? Pride comes before the fall. You set yourself up, black folks. You set yourselves up for this. Your pride, your low self-esteem, you was just happy to have somebody up there that spoke well and looked like you. Barack Obama is dumb as a box of rocks. This motherfucker couldn't even make it as a lawyer. He ended up being a law professor and wasn't that good at that. You understand what I'm saying? He can't be that goddamn smart. He is a crackhead. You understand? Just think about it. But 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 because he looked good and black women, you was right there along with him because you had that 
strong face looking wife. Now let's be honest. I know y'all say she's good looking because that's what you're supposed to say in public. But what we we're not talking about a Claire Huxtable here. You understand what I'm saying? Y'all say, but y'all was happy to have her up there too. Finally, they accepting one of us, the first lady. Pride is what got you, Negroes. It was pride that what got you. Pride is what you let. Pride is why you let the devil in. Pride is why you still support these heathenistic uh, 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 policies right now. Why you can't nobody say nothing about the man. So I'm saying that's my whole point, family. Uh, but anyway, too much moxie. What else you want to get in? And G, if you want to come back in, come back in. Any, don't nobody want no more of this. They don't want this smoke. This is the little <laughs> platform. Go ahead, brother. I mean, you know that that's what we have to. I mean, I have, I have, I have to come back to terms and and, and reevaluate everything after I look at his policy and what he's what he's been doing and what actually went on. It wasn't like we voted on any of his policy. We had hope that he was going to do something that he never yeah. did. Yeah, yeah, go ahead, bro. Go ahead. I got something else to say in a minute. Just ran, he just ran the Democratic playbook on us. Yeah, he did. These Negroes aren't mad. They're not mad at Barack Obama for ushering in this heathen rainbow uh, rider uh, 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 agenda. they mad at him because he didn't give us nothing. Yeah. He had ushered this rainbow agenda in and gave us stuff. We wouldn't care. Isn't that selfish? Are we? Can we really, how far have we fallen away from being God's people? I want you to just analyze that. Oh, well, look, we with a black people. Why don't nobody come hang out with Uncle D tonight? Where y'all at? Come on and get some of this. Where all my religion, where my Bible thumpers at? Y'all ain't worried about Barack Obama in this his agenda. You just wanted some free shit. And because he didn't give you no free shit, you mad at him. Even though we supported this man in his itinerary and his agenda. You want to know where America went? Where did all this shit come from? From 2008 to 2016, you had somebody ushering in a heathenistic agenda. And you wonder why now in 2023, you got rampant rainbow riders everywhere. Every other female you meet, you got to do it. It's the thing now. And he came amongst you. You let the devil in the front door, uh, family. And you still don't want to push him out because pride, ego. And that's why the that's why the most high is punishing your black asses right now. I ain't gonna I, I'm gonna let it go. Go ahead, brother. Go ahead, too much moxie. Go ahead. Praise God. Praise God. I'm, uh, go ahead. Oh. Can you too much moxie? Can you hear me? I think we lost. You got to re-signal. But anyway, family, uh, yeah, I, I, you know, uh, that's where we at. And uh, I might lose I some. Uh, can you hear me now? Y'all hit the number one button if you can hear me. Hit the number one button if you can hear me. If you guys can hear me, hit the number one button. Let me know you can hear me. I'm losing my, my folk, man. But anyway, that's where I'm at tonight. Uh, I, uh, that's going to be my response to this, uh, fiasco now that it's all coming out and about that, uh, the, the great black savior, Barry Obama, uh, oh, look who got, man, what's happening, what's happening, what's happening, ha <laughs> ha, what's going on, brother? What's good, what's good with you, Mr. Uncle, Uncle D? Brother Uncle D. Yeah, 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 man. For you guys who don't know, man, the man who needs no introduction. Big Bass uh, Life is up in here. This is the one that, that keeps these these brilliant videos, man. You know, just timely and appropriate. Thank you so much, man. Introduce everybody to yourself, man. Uh, salute, chat. Salute all the uh, 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 family. Uh, I am Big Bass Life. You know what I'm saying? But uh, yeah, man, like, you kept asking, like, where everybody at? Where everybody at? I'm like, oh, man, I want to just, I want to jump through the pool. But, uh, yeah, this, is a, this is a type of conversation that 
is uncomfortable because it forces you to look in the mirror because grownups never want to admit they're wrong. But in, until you can accept fault and admit that you're wrong, you can't grow. And see, there's see, we think Barack Obama, but it's more coming down the road. You see what I mean? We just like we fall for Barack Obama, we fall for people like uh Dr. Umar Johnson and you know, and I told you, you you can read your Bible and read that the Lord doesn't like men without backbone. You read, you can read your Bible and, and see the Lord doesn't like men like Dr. Boyce Watkins who 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 speak out of both sides of their mouth. You see what I'm saying? So we have to begin when we get more in tune with the most high, then our discernment will go up. When we get closer to that word, when we really start reading that word and, and, and let that word empower us, your life will be better because you'll know more. Some of you are like, damn, Uncle D, it's almost like you can tell the future because I read that Bible and I internalized that Bible. It's the word of God which is empowers me. You see what I mean? You don't get to be a 49-year-old black man operating like I operate in this field that I operate without having the Lord with you strong. You understand what I'm saying? So just keep that in mind. And I'm just trying to help you all understand what my secret is. And my secret is the word of God. And it, it ain't it, it, it's that same old, old-timey religion that got us through some of our darkest hours. If you stick with that Bible and you really understand what you read and you read that word, it will empower you, man. You know, and that's all I'm trying to tell you. And that's really what and, you know, people don't like it because I talk about the degenerate behavior that we have going on in the black community. That's in that Bible. The Bible don't like it either. You say I'm anti this and anti that. Read your Bible. Start with the first. Start with that Old Testament and see what the Lord did to the degenerates, and then skip straight to Revelations, where it talks about it's going to separate the wheat from the chaff. The Jesus Christ that I know is coming back with a terrible sword. You see what I'm saying? To cast out the demons into the pit of fire for a thousand years. That's the God that I know. You see, that's the one to keep me in line. You understand what I'm saying, brothers? And they, they and. And we keep letting these devils in, these devils with black skin. You see, that's the song right there. It's these devils with black skin, that's the problem. You see, we if Jesus, they, we always say this, we all, if Jesus came back and he was a black man, white people wouldn't get, well, shit, if Jesus, if the devil came in the form of a black man, black folks would be food, especially, especially if he was a silver tongue, sweet talking dude to telling these women what they want to hear. Right? Mm. So just yep. think about that, man. And that's what we fell for. And now look at this man. Look at this man who's been idolizing for the past 20 years now. This man ain't nothing but a crack smoking degenerate who's letting white, apparently letting white men bust him in the ass since he was a young a, a youngster. This is who you look up to. This is who you cried for to be your leader. The most religious group of people in America. This is who you look at. You think you think the Most High is proud of you at this time? You wonder why it feels like the Most High has abandoned us as a people? Why it seems like we so lost? Maybe it's we abandoned the Most High. Maybe it's maybe we was a little bit better off. Maybe it was a little bit better off when we was a little less educated and a little broker. And I know word broker ain't a word. When we was poor, we was together, and all we had was our belief. Maybe we were a little bit better off when we were back in the motherland. We were closer to, 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 to the word than we are now. I'm just, I'm just throwing some thoughts out there for you. Maybe we need, as black men, we need to save our souls from ourselves. That's just a thought. My man Slim Shapey, welcome, brother. Always good to have you up in here. What would you like to add to the conversation, sir? Appreciate it for having me. Uh, salute to the, to the chat and to the panel. Yeah. I think you were right. I remember when uh, Barack Obama was running in 2008. He was state senator in Illinois um, at the time. And we were all really excited because we kind of had an idea of who he was, uh, but he hadn't had a lot of experience yet. So when he decided to run, a lot of us who were in university at the time, we were just like, hey, we need to get behind this guy. There's some things that we don't necessarily like about his agenda, which was mostly the LGBTQ stuff, because black people are generally conservative when it comes to that kind of behavior. Yeah, and, uh, we, we don't so like that. That ain't us. That ain't what we yeah, did. It wasn't we us at all. So, like we, so what ended up happening was we had to come up with a strategy to be like, okay, well, people are going to do their thing, but we're not going to be so 
adversely against it because it was so such just, a but basically what you said we gonna get in the bed with the devil just a little bit that's a, that's we exactly what happened it came out. back to bite us it came back to bite us it definitely yeah. it's, it yeah. certainly did it was, it was a mistake that we made on our part i own up to that i was more so like hey look i'm not really into that but if people want to do that that's their own thing we shouldn't really get in their way but this yeah. was all stuff that was coming from the the, the uh, left-leaning uh, parties uh, anyway hold, hold on a minute brother so we got somebody named carl uncle d the word of god has been altered so bad I don't believe anything in our hands can ever be called a holy Bible. Have you read the Bible? Because see, I find that a lot of people who say that the word has been all day, you ain't even read the Bible. You don't even understand what you read. Go read it. Go read it. Hell, read my books. Read my books, and I'll break down life stories that relate right to the Bible, and we both, me and the writers of the Bible, come to the same conclusion. Stop that. You look, man, stop repeating this bullshit that you heard these Three dot one eye motherfucker chakras saying on the internet for the past 40 years. They haven't read the Bible and you haven't read the Bible either. Go read it. Go read it and tell me where it's false. Go read and go read it and tell me if you don't have a nation full of sin, it doesn't invite uh destruction. Go read in the Bible where it says fornication will lead your ass to destruction. We got all these bastard babies out here. And you telling me the Bible is not telling you that this, this is what the fuck happens, sir. This is what happens when you have a whole bunch of babies out of wedlock, diseases, uh, 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 bastard women running crazy. When you let that Jezebel spirit get up in them women, you get feminine. This would what happens. Don't tell me that that's not the truth, brother. Cut that shit out. That weak ass shit. The Bible just, yeah, just, just been Walter. Go read it first and tell me the parts that's been altered. But before you get to the part that's been altered, you don't need a whole lot of truth. All these successful people in the world who have the base as the Holy Bible and you study telling me ain't no truth in it. Well, you know what? You don't believe that. You need to turn the channel. Don't come back to this channel because everything I say come about the word of God. There's forgiveness in my in, in what I say every night, but there's also teaching. Dude, you you in the wrong place. That's why I'm saying all my heroes love love the Bible. Malcolm X, Minister Louis Farrakhan, Martin Luther King, Thurgood Marshall. These were all men of the Bible. These are all men, and they weren't necessarily preachers. So stop that. That's laziness. That's speaking. That's the devil. Speaking through you, brother, we've always been a religious people. Christianity predates its time in Europe. It was in it was in in Egypt uh, for a thousand years before he even got there. Just think about that. But anyway, man, I done ran my blood pressure up, man. Let me get up out of there. Big base life, uh, big. Uh, thank you so much, brother. Keep up the great work, man. I am just honored that that you know you could take some of the things I say and. And just man, some of your words are just brilliant. I think we are. We got to make sure, you know, we, we we just show you appreciation for your brilliance, and because you uh, just brilliance. It's just another brilliant black man, and it's just amazing, you know, how brilliant you are. And this man cranked these songs. This man is cranking out hits. You know what I mean? Like it take him like twenty four hours. You see what I'm saying? This is this is how brilliant this black man is, man. So thank you so much for all your hard work. And I, and I look forward to seeing what else you got coming next. Uh, too much moxie, bro. Always good having you in here. Thank you, sir. I got my old school guys in here. And Slim Shavy, my guys have been here for a minute, man. Thank you all so much. I'm going a, I'm to a, I'm a go ahead and take it down. You know, I'm going to take it down. But please, brothers, we got to save our souls from ourselves. Okay? You can't have one foot in and one foot out. You can't serve two masters. You're going to have to figure this out. I tell you brothers all the time, passport bros, hanging out with them hoes, that's a temporary thing. Because, ain't look, look, you play with them hoes too long, it's going to be destruction for you. I'm just telling you now. You got to get out the game. Get it out your system. Get out the game. Find you a good woman. Find you a good wife. Have you some children. And put the spirit of God in your family. Put that in the center. You got a bunch of Jezebels here in the United States. I get it. You can't make a relationship with these type of women. I get it. I understand. It makes sense. But don't go taking, don't go taking that half-cocked, 
half heathen, half whatever the hell is, is it that we you can't export that because you're just going to destroy other people's country. Go be better men, brothers. That's what I want you to be. Go be better men. Look, I love y'all. God bless y'all. Big shout out to everybody who came through. I appreciate y'all. As I always said this time, just something deep.